Imagine you're going on a trip to Berlin. You look forward to a relaxing holiday in a European metropolis that has it all. A lovely river, hipster crowded coffee shops, historical monuments, the most outrageous nightlife, an impressive museum landscape. On Sunday, you go visit the Natural History Museum. Upon entering the dinosaur hall, your gaze is drawn aloft. You find yourself at the feet of Gyrafatitan Brankai, a long and naked dinosaur, the world's tallest mounted skeleton. Your eyes follow a seemingly infinite chain of vertebrae until you spot a head some 13 meters up in the air. This animal is unbelievably majestic. It makes you feel incredibly insignificant. What you do not realize is that this captivating creature comes from a context of violence. Giraffe Titan was among over a hundred metric tons of fossils that were dug up by German forces in Tanzania right after a brutal colonial war. Despite return claims in the past, the specimen remains the centerpiece of the Berlin Museum. We speak more and more about colonial looted artifacts and whether Western institutions should return them. We even witnessed such returns, for instance, those of the Ben and Bronzes to Nigeria. So far, the natural sciences and natural history museums in particular remain unaffected by these debates. Natural history is not as apolitical nor sterile as we might believe. Visit a large Western natural history museum, just like the one in Berlin, and you can be virtually certain to find objects of colonial provenance exhibited there. That is, however, only part of the story. Dinosaur theft is not only a colonial issue, it keeps happening to this very day. There is an illicit economy spanning the globe, fueled by the bones of dinosaurs and other spectacular creatures of the past. They are dug up in the source nations of the global south, in Morocco, Brazil, Mongolia. They are smuggled to Western countries in violation of export restrictions and customs regulations. They are sold in auctions and at gem shows. They end up in private collections and public museums. The fossil heritage of source countries is stolen, commercialized, and retained on the other side of the globe. These unethical and often illegal practices put source countries at loss in several respects. First, Local researchers are deprived of the opportunity to study scientifically important fossils, to publish on them to advance their careers. Second, local museums lose charismatic specimens that could attract tourists and help educate the general public and inspire the next generation of scientists. Third, local communities lose the chance to learn about prehistoric life in their home region. And finally, Science also suffers. Obtaining specimens through illicit channels often means losing crucial information about the discovery context. Moreover, the high prices paid for fossils incentivize dealers to tamper with specimens to make them seem more spectacular. That, however, only becomes a concern when fossils end up in the hands of scientists. When they enter private collections, specimens are often lost to science completely. And yet, these practices continue. Paleontologists keep conducting research on fossils that were stolen from Brazil, or on amber with fossil inclusions that is mined using forced labor in a war zone in Myanmar. They might be driven by publication pressure or by the quest for scientific prestige. Worse, they remain unimpressed by nascent ethical debates about research practices in paleontology. And this also reflects a lack of public awareness and interest in the matter. For while we are increasingly conscious that Western museums are full of colonially appropriated artifacts, this enlightenment is yet to be extended to the natural sciences. So, most natural history museums will not provide provenance information in order to spark thoughts about how a certain specimen got here. You'll need to do that work yourself. So when you next marvel at a majestic dinosaur in the museum, think about the politics of natural history.
think about accessibility and exclusion. Ask yourself, who else can see what you are seeing and at what cost, both to science and to the country of origin? Giraffe or Titan, if it could talk, would tell the full story. Thank you.